diamonds. So this word right here is um, matsu, right? Yes. So what does it mean? Matsu. Um, I forgot. So matsu means to wait. To wait. Matsu, to wait. Okay. Uh, like matte. Yep, matte and matsu are the same word. So, can you read the sentence from the book for me? Uh, yeah, ちょっと, um, matta. What does that mean? Uh, nope, ちょっと matta, like, please wait, kind of. Close. It's kind of like, wait a second. It's kind of like the context. The waiting is in the past tense. So, like, a little bit have waited. So, um... Last time, our previous sentence was that um, to be extinct means there's not a single one of your kind um, left on the planet. And we're talking about a putteradon. So after he says, yeah, it means they don't exist anymore. He's like, wait a second. No, wait, a have waited a little. <laughs> but it means like, wait a second. Like, wait a sec. Exactly. Um, do you know what this word is? It looks familiar. Yeah, um, it is Nen. I've definitely seen it before. It's pronounced as oh, Nen. Nen. Hi. What does Nen mean? It means years. Yep. Perfect. How about this guy? Mm, the bus looking kanji. Mm. Uh -huh. Close. That's my actually. He's the one that I say looks like a bus. Right. Oh. <laughs> Uh, but this is pronounced as me. That's me on its own. Any guesses? Oh, wait, the bus is over here. What? Hey. <laughs> so uh, that means I, since it's yep. me. This is I, and what's this one? That is my, which is a while ago. Yes, it can or mean ago. a while ago. Yep. It can also mean in front of, so it would depend on um, context. Okay, so we've seen to you before in the past, but before we do that, are you able to read this? We got some kanji without furigana over here, but we've talked about mm. it in the past. So, yoku dragon, whatever right. dragon was. Yep, that would be ryu. Uh, ryu, hi. Yoku ryu, to you, uh, pateradon. <laughs> this is uh, <laughs> I don't think I can that's say that. a good guess. So Yokoryu is actually the Pteradon. That's the um dinosaur the dragon with wings is the Pteradon. This is the bigger category, which means dinosaur. So what's this part pronounced as? That is Ryu. Hi. The first part though is Kyo. So we got kyo, -ryu. kyo -ryu. So yoku ryu, to you, kyo -ryu. So I've taught you in the past that this is a way to name things. So that it's a dinosaur called yoku -ryu, But that's not actually what um, to you is totally doing. To be exact, to you is used to define things. So we're defining this underneath this category, basically. So you don't need to do, um, for example, I could have um, uh, Yamada-kun toyu mondaiji would mean, um, so mondaiji is problem child. Problem child. So, this is, so you're not saying a problem child called that. You're more like you're defining Yamada-kun as a problem child. That's what he is. So you're defining a putteradon as a dinosaur is kind of what it works. This also has a very interesting grammar point, which doesn't show up in this um, specific book. But if you have the defining object listed twice, so if I said, um, kyo ryu to you kyo ryu, for example, this would be, you know, defining dra dinosaur as dinosaur. This means all dinosaurs. So what we 
So that that's a way to define things, basically. So that's how it's a little bit different than naming things after each other. Yeah, it's a defined stuff. Um, so, mondaiji means problem child. So how would you define a person? This is person. It's a little, it's like a little rude way to say person. Like it's not horribly rude, but it's not like polite. Um, so how would you say a person That's known it. as a child? That would be a person known as a problem child. So yatsu toyu mondai mondaijin. Hi, perfect. Yep. Um, so sometimes we'll do something called toyu kotowa. So this koto is actually what we're like is like the B in this case. So it's a way to basically be like, in other words, A is what's after the wa. Sorry, B goes over here. A is after the wa. So if I said um, yokuri over here, for example, I kind of know what I'm writing there. So if I said yokuri, I can say yokuri to you koto wa um, kyoryu da. That would be grammatically correct. I say, in other words, a yokuri is a dinosaur. So a lot of times this will be translated as in other words. Or basically hmm. you're saying defining this thing as this. Blank. Koto wa blank. Um, make more sense when we get up to the sentence. Um, do you know what this is? It is a number. A number. Um, It's not go. It's not go, you're is right. It like uh, is it huh is it six it is six yep uh do you know how how to oh say God. six in japanese how do you say six Roku. yep Roku. perfect okay Roku. so here is a sentence then what does this say uh sono potteradon ga Mm. Me no mae ni iru or iru te iru te iu koto wa a to yo koto koto wa koko wa sengo hyaku nen sengyo hyaku nen yori moto moto mae no Sekai sekai da oskai atte no no ka. Hey. Very long words. Very long words. So we got rokusen go hyaku go man nen. So this right here, it's a lot of numbers. We got a six and we got like a 500. We got a lot of zeros. Uh, we go like that. Um, about that many, I think. A lot, a lot of zeros there. 65 yeah, something. Fine. Uh the lot a lot long, long time ago. So first off, we're actually gonna start on the bottom half of the sentence, which is the Rokusen Go Yakunen Ma um Yori Moto Mai Sekai Da. That's that's where it's gonna end. Right here. So the sixty-five lots of years. Sixty-five times a lot. So, do you know what a sekai is? Sekai is the world. Yes, the world. So, we're describing the world as moto mai. So, really a go. Yes, exactly. So, in other words, so long we're time talking. Ago. Yeah, we're talking about long time ago in the sekai. And this right here is helping to tell us how long ago, time ago, how much long ago it was. It is the 65 something years ago. Um, do you know what the yori part is telling us? Is it at year uh, 6500? Zero, zero? Is it more like uh, uh is it more like 70 years ago or is it more like 50 years ago? Or is it at 65? So yori was I think the first thing is bigger than the second thing. Uh, um, yes. 
uh, Yori uh, gets attached to the smallest object. Kind of means, um, I think of it as less than. One person I know thinks about it as the word from. Which hmm. does actually kind of work. It doesn't make totally grammatically correct English sentences, but it makes sense in English if you translate it as from. So it's like one of those like, I see what you're talking about, but you sound like not a native speaker of English, like that yeah. kind of level. So, but the, there is use uses for using from because we don't really say less than in English at all, even though it's more grammatically correct. So, so if we were using from, for example, from 65 years ago, it's a world that's more in the past. See how that like makes sense, even though you wouldn't say like, you would never say that yeah. in English, but it makes sense in your brain. Versus if I said less than yeah. sixty five years ago, we we're more in the past. Sounds weird, but we kind of know what you're saying. We're saying that Very. this is a bigger number than the second item. So the from definition does actually help um, when you're first learning Yori. I think because it's like for whatever reason, it does actually make sense, even if it's not like how anybody would ever say that. <laughs> So yeah, so we're talking about around at least 50, 50 of the zero 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 years ago. Um, so we have a lot of toy use in here. This is like basically just a way to define things. Uh, this is at the end here, toy use, because this toy use is up here. It's kind of needs both to be um, grammatically correct, but this isn't adding any meanings. It's just a way to kind of end the defining um, phrase. Since um, toyu koto is normally for um, phrases. It doesn't have to be for like phrases, but it normally is. So first off, sono pitara ga me no mai ni iru. So this is mae, not talking about time. It's the second meaning of mae. What do you think me no mai ni iru means? So... The other nen, which is in front of. Yep. Mm, in front of the eye. Yes, whose eye? Mm, yes, exactly. Whose eye? My eye or Putradon's eye? Putradon's eye. That's a good guess, but it's actually my eye. So this is actually saying a mm -hmm. Putradon is existing at the location of right in front of me. So men no mai is almost a set phrase, meaning in front of me. So it would actually be odd to use put it on in this context. Um, you'd have to say put it on no me no mae. You'd have to specify that because it's basically it's assuming that's whoever is talking. That's who the me no mae uh, belongs to. Same with like in English. If I said right uh, before one's eye, for example, right before one's eye, there's a put it on versus right in front of the put it on's eye. We, we would yeah. normally assume it's not the put it on. Uh, just because it's almost a set phrase. So, the te ikoto means, in other words, the fact that there's a put it on right in front of me, what does that mean? What that does it mean means... if you can see a put it on? Where are they? Koko -ko a long time ago, motto no mai no sekai da. So we're in the past, some many years ago. Exactly. In this world. Yep. So yeah, this is pretty complicated grammar wise, but basically we're just saying, in the, so we're defining the fact that we can see put it on. That must mean, since they've been, they went in sync 65 long time of years ago, we must be in the past even before that. That's like the conclusion he makes. Um, okay, so we knew this. This is Roku. Do you know what this one is? Uh something I've definitely seen before. Mm. Um hmm. I did not know. This is go. Go. Ah, that's why it looks familiar. Yep. Hi. What number is go? It is five. Nice. Um. So, what does this say? Can you read it? Ah, sonna koto arie arie nai arie nai arie nai. 
This is very similar to Adi Masen, which uh, doesn't exist, but it's more like possible. Doesn't exist. So, sona koto arienai. All together basically means that's impossible. So, sona koto is that thing, is literally that thing, right? Sona koto arienai. Impossible. Sona koto. That thing is impossible. Um, do you know what this is? Should look very familiar. Uh, very. For some reason, I'm thinking shita. That's a good guess. Shita looks like this. Um, what's right here means child. Do you know what child is in Japanese? Ah, uh, kodomo. Yes. So kodomo for a human child is ko um. Kodomo. It's like this. We, um, this kanji right here is just ko. And it's used for child as in like a generic child. So for example, if I want to talk about a child cat, a cat that is young, a baby cat, in English we call it a kitten. In Japanese, it is a ko neko. Because neko is cat and ko is baby. So you just add ko in front of things when you want to talk about the child of it. So, kodomo, human child. This doesn't mean human, but it's together child, I guess is how that makes that. Um, or mm-hmm. like inu, if you want a puppy, it'd be ko inu, things like that. So this ko, it's very common in Japanese, means child. It also, funnily enough, shows up in, um... oh, spelled that wrong. Right here. Um, so like when you learn things like with a gaku in it, you have a little child inside of it because you gotta teach your child, gotta get your child with your graduation hat on them. (laughs) Okay. Um, what's this word? Um kocha san koto na san. Ocha-san, uh, I think. This is so baby. Oni-san. Oh, Oni-san. Oni-san. Hi. So, yeah, these, these foot, this leg kanji is brother. Oni. If you see it by itself, like just this, uh, it's like, um, I think it's Ani. Aniki. So, yeah, Ani. Oni. Yeah, so this is just ni in this case. Oni-san. Um, what's this up here? Um, that is kodomo, or just ko. Just ko, hi, child. Okay, so first off, we have um Annie talking. So let's go read this sentence. Ah, uh, oni-chan, uh, watashi, ano, ko, ko ni, hmm, the gate kanji. It does have a gate, gate kanji, but in this case, it and... also has the ear inside of it. This is mimi. To so enter. This is kite. Yeah. Um not to enter. Um enters like that. Uh this right here inside of the gate is an ear, which means uh mimi. So together it's actually kiku, like kite, which means to listen. Oh, to listen. Hi. Uh kite miru. So you te. So you te aniwa. Nawabashi go o oriba jineta. Hi. Jineta. So first off, I think you know what the dictionary form of this word is. What's the what's the dictionary form of that word? Uh it was like uta or yeah. Mm, uta. It's not uta. You said it you said this right here together was iute. That's how you read it. Iu. And there's so this yep, this is iu. That's the dictionary form of the word. So in Japanese, the dictionary form of a word is the form that ends with like an oo sound. Um, so this right here is subject to change when you conjugate it. So because of that, when we change e into u into this into te form, we drop the oo. It becomes ite. So so ite. So it's not so iute. Slightly different. So the oo. Is the dictionary form. It's not in te form. 
just like right here, this right here is the dictionary form is kiku, right? But it's not kikuite, hai. it's kite. Hai. Same thing. Ite. Um, so in this context, ki kiku has two possible meanings. The first meaning is to listen. Do you know what the second meaning is? Kiku. I remember getting it wrong a lot. It's uh, hard because yeah, it's hard because the meanings are not super related, especially not in English. The other meaning is to ask. Oh, to ask. Hi. Yes. So in Japanese, in general, if you look at the particle that's attached to kiku, you can tell which form it is. If we see the particle ni, it tends to be to ask versus if you see like the particle o, tends to be to listen. Um, There's exceptions to these rules because there's exceptions to everything. But in general, you can make that assumption. Um. Mm. So what what did Annie say to her brother? Oni-chan, watashi ano ko ni kite miru. What is this ano ko referring to? Where did this child come from? Ano ko. Hmm. Ni kite miru. Ko. Would they refer that to the pterodon? Yep, that's the pterodon. So it's very common to refer to like an animal as like sonoko or anoko. It's 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 a more it it shows that you think it's cute basically. So she's like, so Annie's like, let me go talk to that cute animal over there, anoko. Um, it that cute small thing. If she said like sonomono or some uh, like kare or something, I don't know. That kare would be weird because kare would insinuate it's a human being. Um, if you said like are, for example, that would be rude. That would insinuate yeah. she thinks it's a thing versus a living thing. Um, so sonoko is like a cute way to refer to some kind of animal. So she could just say putrudani kite miru, but Annie is a little girl, so she's gonna use that cute little animal because she loves animals. So it's mostly because of like what kind of character she has. Is why we're using Anoko more than anything else. Mm. Yeah. She thinks it's like a cute little baby. Kind of. It's a little animal. So, what does Annie want to do again? She wants to. So, she wants to ask the Pterodon. Yes. Miru? Miru? Or. Oh, so miru. so so miru in this context means to try. Mm -hmm. So I want to try asking that child. Um, so what she wants to ask is basically like, where are we? How did we get here? Things like that. So she informs who? Who does she t tell this to? That she's gonna go because she's talking out loud. Right? Yes, she's talking to her own Nitan. Then next you have so ite. Annie wa nawabashigo o um ori hajimeta. So what did Annie do? Mm, so ite Annie wa so so ite Annie wa nawabashigo o ori hajimeta. Hmm. So well, so is like that. Yes. So it's a filler word for this part. So theoretically, you could just say, Oni-chan, watashi anoko ni kite miru to ite. Annie wa go ori hajimeta. But that's very long. No one likes run-on sentences. Mm. <laughs> so we're using so instead. So that, so basically everything that was said before, right. ani wa nawabashi go o. So ani rope ladder, Aribajineta. Hmm. Aribajineta. Oh, ori, ori, hajimeta. From ori. Aribajineta. Oh, hajimeta. Hi. Hi. Ori. So she fell down the ladder. Oh no, that that'd be that'd be ochi. Or, ochi hajimeta. Ah, <laughs> ochita. She's doing ori do, which means to descend. So she's just mm. climbing down the ladder. <laughs> 
Yeah, oridu and ochiru are very similar. So this would be ochi hajimeta for any hi. So do you have any idea why it's a te here rather than perhaps a to or something else? Or no de or something. Mm. Any guesses why? So itte. Um. My hint is that this is a kind of and. But I'm just wondering if you want to know what if you know why we use this and versus like a different and like no de <laughs> or mm. something. Or... Is it like I, I can't remember what it was. It's like. Something happens and then something yes. else happens. Yep. So this happens first and then the second event happens. Um, te also has some amount of intent with it. So she says this if she, because she wants to do this. But she, it doesn't mean you have to do it. But there is some amount of intent between the actions. So she first, you know, says, big brother, I'm going to go ask it a question. And then she climbs down. So there's like a link between the actions, right? It's not like they're totally hmm. unrelated. There's a slight link between them. Because, you know, she's telling her brother, basically, I'm going to climb down before she climbs down. Right? Versus if she yep. climb down without telling him, that's kind of rude. Like, she, she's a good girl, so she's going to tell him first. <laughs> Even if she's not going to okay. listen to him. <laughs> so that's why te is here. So te is used between slightly linked actions when the first action happens and the second link, link action happens. But it's not like, um, for example, to. If it's so, it says, so you to, aniwa nabashiko o ori hajimeta. That tends, it could, it tends to be like a 100% factual event with to. Like it doesn't have to be, but that tends to be how it works. Um, and also it tends to be immediately after. So she says this, and right after that, she's like down on the ladder, climbing down. So it's it's very abrupt to very like bam versus te there can be a pause between the actions it doesn't really matter when these two actions occur only that they have to be um one two and linked uh, mm. but yeah um what's this word hmm the kanji for shita hi or under um the this would actually be the kanji looks like the kanji for up so on so kanji for on top of something uh has a line with a line on top of it and the kanji for under has a line mm. underneath this uh ground line so it's good to think about this part right here as like a ground line and this right here is telling you where the item is located however this right here is actually tomedu which does have as i said the top part that's um ue i guess Mm -hmm. versus as you said earlier shita yeah. is below there shita. but yeah this right here though is tomeru and tomeru means to stop um specifically it's to um, stop someone so this is not me stopping on my own volition it's to stop someone else tomeru okay so these two kanji have the same readings do you know what this is? Uh, oh, sorry, I'll, I'll read this. This is Naka. Mm. This is Naka Yoshi. You know what Naka Yoshi means? Naka Yoshi. Is it like something to do with comrade? So It does. It does have to do mm. with comrade. This word up here actually is comrade. This is Nakama. Nakama. Mm. So Naka Yoshi means to get along. To have good comradeship, right? <laughs> Com that's not how that's pronounced. Com comrade, comrade. Mm. You know what that word is. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's that's to get along. Hi. Have good comrade, comradeship. Uh, very. It's a very common word. Similar with how nakama is also very common in Japanese. Comrade doesn't show up a lot in um English, but that. But we do have the concept of nakama. In, in how nakama is used, we just don't normally use it. Uh, it's just, you know, separating an in-group from an out-group. So it just means us, basically, nakama. Those like us. Okay, so it is our halfway point. So it's time to do the switcheroo. 
So I'll stop sharing and yep. we can share.